Ladies and gentlemen, I am at the Nottingham Speaker's Corner. This is one of the very few open places in this country where you are allowed, indeed encouraged, to come and say your piece. Come and argue about the politics of the day. We face a very interesting choice at this time in this country. The European referendum is less than two weeks away and will determine the future of this country. You have the political elite from all over Europe telling you you have to remain and if you don't vote to remain, doom and gloom is going to be for you. That is only threats and bullying. In truth, the people who run the European Union are terrified that the British public might do precisely what so many other countries' populations have done and reject the European Union in a referendum. We have it seen it in Ireland. We're one of the few countries that had a vote on every single EU treaty, not because our political leaders actually thought we had a right to vote, but only because we had a written constitution which actually ensured that we had the right to vote on every EU treaty change before it was put in place. And what happened on two occasions in the Nice Treaty? We said no, but our political elite, including the European elite, said, sorry, you gave the wrong answer, come back and vote again. So we had to vote again again on the Nice Treaty at the behest of our European political leaders. We're all now telling you the exact same thing. You have to do what they say or else. And what happened with that EU constitution? It was originally put to the French and the Dutch voters. Both voters said no, we reject this treaty and we reject it specifically because it enshrines ne the neoliberal agenda into the treaty. It ensures that privatisation and liberalisation of your basic services is going to take place in the future and that's why the Dutch and the French said no. What happened? The European political elite, including the governments of those two countries, conspired against the people and they took the treaty back and they repackaged it and renamed it, not the EU constitution anymore, but then called the Lisbon Treaty. And Nicolas Sarkozy promised the French people if they elected him as president, he would give them a slimmed down version of the EU constitution. And he did give them a slimmed down version. It was 55 pages less than the original EU constitution. But it was 7,222 words more than the original EU constitution. How did they come about and get it into 55 pages less? Because they reduced the font size and took out the line spacing. Total contempt for the ordinary people's decision and what happened. You look at the voting intention figures, there are something like for every two Labour voters, for every two left voters that are going to be voting uh, remain, there is going to be at least one who is going to also be voting for leave. And for a long time, of course, it was absolutely normal for people to be on the left, to be Greens, in fact, and be opposed to the European Union. You when people say, oh, there's no such thing as a European army, a common defence is enshrined in the treaty. When the men, heads of state agree that, it will happen. And this is something everybody concerned about disarmament and demilitarisation should be worried about. What is the agency that's going to decide what member states should spend on military capabilities? It's an agency called the European Defence Agency, E. DA. Now why should you be worried about that? Well you should first of all look at the origins of the European Defence Agency. Where did it come from? The European Defence Agency was originally set up in the 90s when the European arms industries lobbied the European Commission after the end of the Cold War because they were very very worried Oh, our arms sales have slumped. We are getting no more arms sales. We need something to boost the EU arms industries so we can compete on a global level. So what did the European Commission do? It facilitated the European arms industries. It helped to ensure that they could make more and more money out of weapons of mass destruction, out of killing machines, out of things that are basically devastating to the vast majority of the world. What did they do? They set up the European Armaments Agency. And in 2000, at the Thessalonica summit, that European Armaments Agency was renamed the European Defence Agency and it was given treaty status in the EU Constitution stroke Lisbon Treaty. And it was given the role of assessing all member states' military capabilities. So it doesn't take a genius to work out the fact that this agency, which is basically a mouthpiece for the arms industries, is going to be assessing what member states should spend on military capabilities. And it's not going to be telling you to disarm, to spend less on weapons, because it's not in the, in the arms industry's interest to do that. Fisheries are controlled at the moment 
by a certain EU commissioner from Malta called Kamanu Vella. Now Kamanu Vella is a very prominent Labour politician from Malta and if you look at his Facebook site you will see that he talks a lot about tourism, the Mediterranean and funnily enough Malta because he's from there. He has control of the seas everywhere between the eastern Mediterranean through to the Western Atlantic, North Sea, Baltic Sea and the seas around Scotland. He doesn't talk about the areas around us very much. If we were to vote leave in a week and a half's time, then fisheries around Scotland would become the responsibility not of Westminster, but actually of the Scottish Parliament. In other words, they would end up in the hands of the Scottish National Party. And responsible Scottish politicians such as Nicola Sturgeon, who I'm sure would make a good job of repairing the environmental damage that has been done by the common fisheries policy over the years. And after all, she is named after a fish, as is her good friend, Alex Salmond. And I'm sure these people would make a good job of the common fisheries policy by making sure that it was no longer common and in fact was Scottish. But I'm here urging the people to vote for democracy. Yes, to vote for change. Just as people vote for change against apartheid, we need to vote for change against the undemocratic, centralised, bureaucratic, unaccountable EU.